Well, I'm uh, honored to welcome now, join, to join me is Congresswoman uh, Michelle Bachman from the state of Minnesota. Michelle, thanks for being with Thank us. Thank you, Tony. Now, let me ask you this question. Is now the time? Absolutely now is now, now the time. In fact, it's over time. We're in such a big mess right now that we really do have the choice to make. Are we going to fight now or are we going to act, actually see the country go over the cliff? People are fearful right now, Tony. I'm home nearly every weekend. I go and fly and speak in other states as well. A lot. People, a lot, mm -hmm. and, and people are fearful because they, they recognize with a sense of urgency that something's really yeah. wrong. We have a son who lives in Connecticut. He's a physician. He called me yesterday and said, Mom, do you know what I just paid for a gallon of milk? $4.19. He said, I can't believe it. Gasoline prices here in Washington, D.C., 419 was the lowest. Usually there's three prices up there on the yeah. big board. 419 was the lowest here. So when you see, for instance, that just before, the day before that Barack Obama took over as President of the United States, the average price of gasoline in the United States was $1.83 a gallon. That's How shocking. How we long for those days. How we long for it. Now we've more than doubled. So on almost every metric, the president has failed the people. And so now we have to have the people are rising up, as we're seeing, and they're saying we, we're going to take our country back. Well, I think that is so clear and so evident. Just with, you know, as your time here in Congress, I mean, you've become a... Uh, kind of a poster child for America taking government back as you're finding well, together support. together with the Family Research Council. Well, but you, you've been such a great, a great spokesman for that and, and unwavering in your commitment. So I just want to thank you for, thank uh, you. for being thank unyielding. You. Well, I'm, I'm uh, and, one and among many. And a city that tends to, <laughs> to chew up and eat up uh, conservatives, although there's a lot, as you said, there's a yeah, lot more here. Yeah. We're coming to a showdown. Uh, here over this temporary spending, which is uh, in many ways going to set the, the stage for the, the big debate. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen? Well, as all of your viewers know, this coming Friday, if we don't have some sort of agreement, there will be a government slowdown. I don't know if you've spoken about this, but there is no such thing as a shutdown. It doesn't happen in the lexicon in gov of government. Social security checks continue to go out. The military continues to go forward. And at least 60 percent of all of the federal government stays open and functioning. It's only the non-essential part of government, 40 percent, that actually goes on furlough. And it would actually be probably for a fairly small amount of time. And whenever this has happened in the past, which isn't very often, those government workers have always gotten paid back. So uh, this will not be the end of the world. There will still continue to be state government, local government. But the fight is now. That's something that we can avoid. We have to have this fight. Let, let me, uh, if I can, skip to a couple of questions that uh, have come in from, uh, from viewers. What are the potential consequences? Now you talked a little bit about mm -hmm. about you know what's going to happen. Essentially, government shrinks slows back. Down. It, it slows down. down. It goes back to, to its really its, yeah, it's well to its constitutional <laughs> a boundaries. A lot of your viewers actually. are probably <laughs> saying, "Yeah, I think that's a good idea." <laughs> but what are the potential consequences uh, for shutting down the government, slowing down the government for a period of time? I mean, it's probably going to be a very short period of time. But are there any? ramifications for a government slowdown over a period of time? Well, here in Washington, D.C., a lot of people are coming in for tours, and our staff would be markedly uh, reduced. I think I would have three staff members that are left, and that would mean that we probably wouldn't have people from my staff be able to take people on tours, but we might still have people over at the visitor center. I really believe that some of the inconveniences that would occur because of a slowdown People are willing to take yeah. those inconveniences because if it's between that or quite literally saddling the, not just the next generation, us in our lifetime with this kind of debt, I'll be 55 years old tomorrow. And so I've still got a life. Happy birthday. Thank you. I've still got a li lot of life left in me. And Marcus and I are planning to work for a lot more years yet. But we will see in our lifetime and not in the not too distant future, a very different future if we don't get this under control. I really believe that even before we retire, we're going to see our country, if, if we do nothing and allow this trajectory to continue, we will see our country descend into the realms of the United Kingdom, France, Spain, Greece. Mm. Who would have ever thought yeah. the United States could be in that situation? We will, we will, if we don't uh, immediately change course. Now, one of the issues that you have been very strong on, uh, vocal on publicly, and have been out across the country speaking about, is that we need to defund the government takeover of health care. Yes. That that needs to be included uh, in these uh, temporary or uh, permanent fixes to, yeah. to the budget. 
Are we going to see that? Right now, it doesn't look that way, that we will. And I'm very sorry to see that. And I want to thank your listeners and your viewers for how profoundly they have responded to that call. They literally melted phone lines. And I, I want them to know that. Sometimes they think, I made a phone call. It didn't make any difference. Yes, it did make difference. Because, the, because of the fact that they pushed so hard, now we're seeing in the 2012 budget, we're seeing a full repeal and defunding of Obamacare for the 2012 proposed budget. That's thanks to your viewers because they picked up the phone because they came down to Washington, D.C. They made a difference. So maybe not necessarily this week will we see that, but now we're seeing that in the Republican budget for 2012. So I thank them. It's really the people that have made this happen. What do people need to be doing right now? What they need to write, do right now is they need to make a phone call. Emails are good if you can do it, but a phone call is better. The best, of course, is a visit to Washington. Not everyone can do that, but make a phone call and say, I demand that we defund Planned Parenthood, and I demand that you also vote to defund Obamacare. Why? Because Obamacare, for the first time in the history of this country, will have taxpayer-subsidized abortion in the health care bill. The, uh, President Obama denied it. We know that it's true. It's already come true in Pennsylvania. We don't want to see taxpayer-funded abortion. Let me ask you this question. We're about out of time, and I want to thank you for coming by sure. and, and, and th always all that you're Anytime. doing. How can our folks that are watching uh, pray for you? They can pray for me to have stamina and health, and also more than anything, pray. I would ask for prayers for wisdom and for guidance. That is the most important thing because Solomon said of the Lord, of the Lord, when when he was praying, he wanted he wanted wisdom and he wanted understanding. For anyone that's in public office, it doesn't take very long to realize the limits of our human abilities. We need a supernatural ability, and that's something only the Lord would provide. So pray for wisdom, pray for understanding, and pray then that we'd have courage to stand strong. Well, you, you, you have courage. Keep your courage. We'll Thank pray you, that you have more. Thanks. God bless you. Thanks so much. Thank you for every, all the all great right. work here.